We're on your side tonight, paying homage to the past while preserving the future. We all know the housing market is hot right now and inventory of available homes is low. Most normal people are pushed out of buying. Whether housing, whether you're renting, everything's increasing. Oh, it's outrageous right now. At this point, we're saying that we're probably not going to be able to move. But this might actually surprise you. According to the latest census data, there are almost 725,000 vacant homes in North Carolina. Thousands of those are abandoned, often forgotten about. Laura Stotts is on a mission to save them. Here in our area, she has photographed and done research on homes built hundreds of years ago. Our photojournalist Greg Simpson uses his camera to share why Stotts wants to bring new life to the historic homes. As a kid, I lived in Texas and we had Hurricane Bonnie had hit at the Gulf Coast and it tore right down our street and the apartment complex that we lived in was kind of decimated overnight. We went from living in this very busy neighborhood with all of our childhood friends were there to overnight everybody had been evacuated um, and then it was a ghost town. Our apartment that we lived in was not, it wasn't damaged, but like we're watching this whole thing unfold from our sliding glass door and we're, we can see the roofs lifting off houses and car hoods flipping across the street. And so for fun, my sister and I would go explore all the abandoned buildings. It was super intriguing to find like what people had left behind. Um, the apartments were wrecked, they were nasty, carpets were soaking wet, and but there was something about the abandonment, like the very abrupt abandonment of it that caught my attention at a very young age. And then um, as an adult, it sparked again. There was a job that I had at the time that kept me on these exact back roads and this was one of the first houses that I found and because I was always intrigued with abandonment, I stopped at the neighbor's house and like I couldn't not stop at this house and so I stopped at the neighbor's house and met her and found out some history of this home and then um, it just kind of, it just kind of went from there it, and I've been doing it for almost 10 years now. I photograph abandoned farmhouses. If I can, I talk to the property owner and or talk to a neighbor, find out a little bit of the history of the home, and then I research the genealogical history of it. Um, and then I share the stories about the families that lived here or who built the homes online. I find old, like, antique instruments. I find mummified animals. Um, there's often, some of the houses look like somebody just got up and walked away and left everything behind. It's, I mean, so they're, they're mysteries that you find in these houses, because some of them, with the amount of belongings that they left behind, it doesn't make sense that, that there's so much left behind. You're like, what in the world happened here? So there's, there's always some kind of a mystery that feels like it needs to be solved. Once I photograph a house and I go back home, it's there is hours of research that I do. So like I'll I'll study genealogical genealogical records. I study census records. Um, I look for on the Library of Congress. I look for old photos of the home. Any information that I could possibly gather about the family that lived here, and I really try to pinpoint it to who actually built the home. I want to find out the first people that lived here. The importance of genealogy and preserving our ancestral history is why I do it. The stories that I share, I hope, inspire people to want to research their own family history and record their own genealogy and build their own trees. So one of the last kind of like cherry on top um, items that I do after I have photographed a house is if I can pinpoint it to an exact family, and I often can, I will go on Family Search or Ancestry and I will upload a photo, one of my photos of what the house looks like today to that family tree and I'll add a little note in there for whatever, whatever family owns that family tree. I add a little note in there, hey, just in case you wanted to know, this is the home that your ancestors lived in. You know, they built it, here's what it looks like today. And so I kind of like leave a little, a little Easter egg on their family tree. <laughs> They are disappearing faster than I can photograph them. And they are, whether it's mother nature, vandalism, arson, sometimes controlled burns by the fire department, a tear down for progress. Um, their homes are not built like this anymore. The timber that was used to build the homes doesn't exist anymore. The, the craftsmanship of it isn't, we don't see it in these cookie cutter homes. And so 
to me, they're they're like historical relics that that deserve to be saved, and they're it's our ancestral history. That is fascinating. It's kind of like the plot line of the, those you know rehab shows that you see on TV all the time, where they they redo the houses, that kind of thing. Yeah, but that's really cool. Uh, all right.